Pull up a stool and pour yourself a pint, as you're about to join three intrepid drinkers, Kevin, Justin, and Mark, as they embark on another beer-tastic voyage. Bienvenidos! A beer-tastic voyage! Me amo Kevin! Yo son Justin. We've done this game before. Se hablo español. With ese ape! Italiano. Anyway, not español. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Beer Tastic Voyage. My name's Kevin. That's Mark over there, and that's Justin. And now that we've done our foreign language broadcast as well, hi, everybody. Welcome. Today, we have you beers. Can to the YouTube uh, channel. We have a little uh, sign language interpreter in the corner. I don't know what I just did, but it's You something. probably told everybody to go fuck their mother. <laughs> Listen, if they're hot, you do what you gotta do. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyway. Jesus' mom has got it going on. <laughs> I, have a, I have a sick feeling in the stomach now. <laughs> Anyway, we have beers today from Hill Farmstead Brewing Company in, in Burlington, Vermont. Yes. Um, they are known for their New England IPAs. Greensboro. Greensboro. It's, just, it's, it's pretty close. Um, but they're a pretty well known, you know, farm brewery. Yes. Um, these are more gifts from my brother and his adventure up there. So if you, Thank you, Keith. If you scroll back to the. Uh, foam brewery. We were not a huge fan of the foam beers that he brought back for us. Yeah. Much to the chagrin of some of our listeners, like, right. like Danny and uh, Jack. Yeah, I know. I know some of the hopheads that listened were really broken hearted that we could not that we did not enjoy them the same way. Um, but I'm hoping that the beers that we have four of them from Hill Farms there that uh, hopefully these are a little bit different in that sense. Now Justin has some more intel on it, so I'm going to throw it over to him. Yes. Um, so I can say up front that for those people waiting to hear what we think of you know, Hill Farms that are doing on IPAs, you're not going to find out because Keith was either, either drunk enough or smart enough not to purchase us any. Um, so history-wise, Hill Farms that was established in 2010 by Sean Hill. Um, it was in Greensboro, Ben, Vermont. Um, apparently that area is known as the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Uh, there was a Wikipedia link I could follow to find out what that means, but I decided that I'd make up my own version of it in my head and move on with my life. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, Vermont at one point in time was its own like republic, just like Texas. I'm sure it was. You know, hence being able. I, I go golfing there. I haven't been for a couple of years with a friend whose family has a, has a, um, a yeah. uh, bed and breakfast uh, uh, near Killington, and we would golf and hear automatic gunfire at the same time. <laughs> so there's a they love their guns up there, as liberal as we think they are. Uh, anyway, so they're, free, man. they're free. yes, they're about uh, seventy miles outside of Burlington, so not as close as I ever thought, um, okay. but close enough for an hour drive, I suppose. Uh, he apparently, much much like uh, probably Mark's daughter and my son will, did beer brewing as a science project in high school. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Here's how beer works. Uh, he then started a homebrew club when he was in college. Uh, and the other thing that I know about him is his first commercial experience at the Shed Brewery in Vermont. He even went to Denmark um, at a brewery that has some fucked up letters with slashes in them. Uh, <laughs> is there a couple of umlauts in there? No, there are no umlauts. Oh, uh, yeah. Mark has taught me how to pronounce umlauts over time. I don't know what the hell these are. Like, Norebo Ruragas. It sounds like a favela in Brazil, but it's in Denmark. Apparently. Okay. Uh, and then he, apparently he returned to the U.S. and yeah, started it, the brewery in 2010. It's a. Uh, it, it's the diameter symbol, so it's an O with a. Yeah, and I know the I know the letters right. he's talking about. Yeah. But I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, no idea how that's no. pronounced. And you know, if anybody knows if you got a linguistic major, send us some, some intel. So, I mean, one interesting thing that I found about the brewery is they're very into their own heritage. Not into yeah. their own heritage, but into their family heritage. Yes. Um, so, on the about page of the site, which is the first place I checked before I went to Wikipedia to find out more information about it, they said Hill Farms that Brewery is the culmination of many years of travel and insight, of experience and education, of friends, friendships and explorations, which is makes a lot of sense considering two of the beers we're going to have from their, um, is their, uh, not heritage series, it's uh, ancestral series, right? And named after two um, other family members from a long time ago. In fact, its logo was retrieved from a sign that once hung in um, Aaron Hill, which is their great 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 grandfather, father's tavern. Wow, yeah, that's so, cool. Yeah, pretty neat. So, a lot of history involved in the state of Vermont and the local area. Really neat. 
Green Mountain State? Yes. Up from Oh yeah, Green, Green Mountain National is the, the golf course I play there. Right, so. I'm saying, like, I think it's the Green Mountain State. I think so. All I know is that the old man on the mountain fell off the mountain. Yes. What the fuck is that from? Is it a rock formation? Oh, okay. I thought this was like a limerick or something that I was unaware of. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he's not like, You remember the 50 state quarters? Yeah. It was on the 50 state quarter. Oh, okay. And then that doesn't exist anymore? Yeah, it fell off the mountain. Fucking erosion. Um, so. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm to write about a drunk man. All right, so we have four four beers from them. Four uh, beers. Uh, 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 we have three saisons, which many people might be saying three saisons. It's too many of the same beer. Well, saisons can be a lot of shit, so we'll find out how similar they are. And they're also all blended with different things in there, and yeah, supplemented with all sorts of adjuncts. So. I don't think it's going to be three of the same here. I highly doubt it. And the fourth one is in a robust porter. And I am super pumped to start. We're starting off with our Convivial Suarez. Well said, man. Uh, oh, you did it. Which is from, I did. Well, it took you guys saying it three times and me like repeating it in my head as I was as I was speaking it now. It is, uh, this is one of our saisons. It's part of their grassroots series. I can't tell you what that means, but they have an entirely different series. They have a lot of series, but one of them. Is grassroots. Which is it about politicians standing on soapboxes holding brooms? I highly doubt it. I think that might be a whole other thing. Perhaps with a token little person? That's going to be a little person. We can't be a big person. Oh, brother, we're out there. Missed it. No. Yeah, well, I saw it. I knew what you were talking about. It just freaked me out that you went there. Well, anyway, what's um, about, what about the uh, Convivial Suarez? This, we need to know about. This uh, is a, uh, a farmhouse ale brewed with hibiscus and lemon. The only okay. information I have on it. It comes in at six percent PVV, and it's a saison slash farmhouse style. All know. right, let's get into it. I can also say that um, color-wise, it reminds me of a hibiscus. It's a pinkish hue. Yeah, and the color is definitely the color of this beer is definitely coming from the hibiscus flowers. Okay. Now, hibiscus flower-wise, what what can we, before I taste this? Not, but obviously, I don't have the flavor on it. What can we expect from hibiscus? Aside from the pinkish color. Uh, they also had a uh, fairly strong tartness. Yeah, I get tartness on the aroma quite a bit. It makes me excited to drink it. It's tartness mixed with a little bit of um, a, a shitty descriptor for people listening, which is put funk, you know, like farmhouse. If you think yeah. of it, it's very light. It's not a, a, an overpowering. It's got some black pepper uh, sort of feeling also. Yeah. The head on it is fantastic. It's got that nice little, all those tight, tiny little bubbles. Create a fantastic layer there on top. Yes. Um, it's also quite carbonated, which is part of the style. I mean, it's, it's an effervescent style. Yeah, it's got good lacing on the bus. Oh, man. I can smell it for a while. This isn't quite cologne quality like the Wicked Chowder was, but this is uh, smell no, amazing. The smell is really good. And it, and I I think it really does hit that farmhouse kind of note to it that you're talking about. It smells. There's a funkiness to it. There's a little bit of our earthiness to it. It's, but it's not unpleasant either. No, uh, I just took a sip and, damn, that's good. Yeah, it's a good tart saison. Yeah, it's it's got a, enough lacticness to balance. I think the uh, without the without that lactic sourness would be very funky. Yeah, this is really really interesting. A lot of complexity here. The the lemon quality I really enjoy, which is strange for me to right. say. There's a little bit of that tartness to it. Um, it's got good lemon flavor without the pit. Yeah. It, and that, you, and the pit is what puts me off. Would you consider this a Meyer lemon quality? I don't. I, I know that's a thing. <laughs> but I have also not had a Meyer lemon to be like, yes. I'm only asking because things that I've had with Meyer lemon in it have been similar to this in the sense that you said no pith none yeah. of that like bitter quality from a lemon just the kind of good sweetness and tartness yeah this is i this sucks for for recording audio because i'm out of words for it but the taste of it is really fantastic um it's got almost a i want to say like a flanders red kind of feel to it but lighter mm -hmm. Like uh, I can see that. You know, the Flanders pink, <laughs> you know, it definitely has the that same level of complexity, right? Flavor. The 
it's definitely lacking the uh, the acetic notes that you get in the Flanders Red, though. Yeah, they're agreed. They're, yeah, they're, they're just pleasant. They're, they're they're just enough. Yeah, hence why I went with the pink, not the red. You know, it's 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 a light version of that. Um, I think the hibiscus is in the aroma, and you pick it up a, uh, in the taste a little bit. It's a floral quality, too. right? But this is a really nice tart beer that's not over the top punch in the face tart, but definitely prominent. So we we frequently 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 talk about uh, gateway beers and you know beers craft beers you can serve to someone who may not be you know, familiar with craft beers. This isn't that. No. Um, I think that if you could guess, if you just handed this to someone and didn't say this is a beer, I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. But And I, I think that it, as far as a Saison or a tart beer goes, I think that is a really great place to start. But at the same time, it's, it, it's just the least beeriest beer <laughs> that you can this come across style-wise. Beer. No. No. There's no real uh, malt character that sticks out in the beginning to me. Right, the character really comes from the yeast, the adjuncts, and um, really, really it's the yeast more than anything. It's far removed from my core though. Yes. Um, and I say that only to, for explanation purposes, you know, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the beer that I want. Yeah. Like, when I when I think about a beer that I want to drink on a hot day, this is sort of it. Now, this is really, it's really interesting to me, and it tastes, it's just the right amount of tartness without it being sour or puckering, like, Mm -hmm. um, it finishes pretty clean. It doesn't hasn't really built up, but I'm starting to feel it on the inside of my cheeks a little bit. Um, you know that I've that I've been drinking a sour beer a little bit more. It's it's stepping out a little bit of a yeah. It builds a little as it goes, but at the same time, it, I I almost like that quality of these beers. It makes me slow down and pay attention more to drinking, like being more mindful of it, I'm not just smashing it into my face all on the you know, that one. Right, but it completely is. You can do that. It's not so tart that you couldn't do that. Oh, you could, and there would be no repercussions to it, but I, I want to know what's going to happen as, as it keeps sort of unfolding. I'm getting more of a floral quality as it warms up, which, I mean, it makes sense. Mark, Mark literally held his head backwards like a Muppet and finished what he had. Out of the corner, you went like this and tilted your whole head back and dumped it in there. That's what I, I always really do know. when I get to finish the glass, though. Yeah. I haven't noticed that before. I thought it was really tasty. Um, I think it's it's a beer worthy of some more contemplation. Um, and I think you'd hit a lot of people. I think you could catch a lot of people with this beer. It's saying those that want to just drink it and have a little bit of the tartness and experience something different, or those that want to hang out and really contemplate it and find the finer points of it. I think both groups are going to be happy with that beer. Uh, for me, I think it's really good. I really enjoy it, and it's probably going to fall in the bomber category. Like, it comes in a uh, champagne bottle. 750. Yeah, 750. And I, I think that's exactly it. Like, I could kill one of those myself, but at the same point, I'd be very happy to crack that open and share it with people pretty frequently. Yeah, I think that I think a lot of people, I hate when people say this, but I have, I'll have to agree on this. I think a wine drinker would gravitate towards this yeah. pretty pretty quickly. I think if you get somebody that likes a, uh, a dry wine, like you could get them this, and you could probably bring them to the fold. Yeah, I, the, what I have left in my mouth now after finishing the sample we had is, is a lot of what I would taste if I had just had a drier red wine. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, there's no, the tannins, it's not like a tannic no. quality that comes out, but it definitely has that tannin that you drink, you see at the end of it in your mouth. Um, so for me, it's going to be a bomber. You said that already. I did? Yeah, okay. I said that. All right, I'm glad you typed it in. All right, how about you, Mark? Where do you want to go with it? I'm going to, I'll stay at the pint. Okay. Uh, it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, a Trade Joe's offering. I think it's called like Blushing Monk or something like that. That also has hibiscus in it. Right. It might be a triple. I don't remember for sure. But, you know, it, it, between the color and uh, the uh, flavor notes, it definitely reminds me of that. So uh, if you're looking for something that's readily available in our area, that's mm -hmm. possibly an option for you. But it, I don't love it. Right. It is good. It's complex. I just... I just want the one glass, though. I'm going to be a bomber. Um, I want to contemplate it a little bit more than a glass. I also don't don't 100% love it. 
but it's all, I think it's a, a really solid uh, Saison, especially for anyone out there who hasn't necessarily had a lot of Saison, but it could be a really good production too as well. So would you say you like it? <laughs> yes, if we're going Cold Stone style, I would get a like it. <laughs> wow, mangled that fucking cat. <laughs> Alright, so what's the second one that we have here? This is uh, Brother Soy. Oh yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we're asking Mark for these. Soy Sogini? It's French. I just know it's French. The G and the N afterwards. Got it. I don't know. The, the E at the end is accented. I, I, I don't know how uh, Soigne? Is it Soigne? What do they say? Or no, it definitely be soy. Soy. Because it's S O I G N. Sonia. Sonia. Accented E. Oh, yeah. S O I G N. Sonia. Sonia. Yes. Brother Sonia. I'll, I'll stake my, my French speaking reputation on that. Yeah, I don't zero. Yeah, we didn't, nobody, nobody was speaking with Pepe Le Pew at the opening. Parlez-vous français and not blonde. <laughs> not blonde. Better than I could do. Well, actually, that's not true. I could, I could probably do some fencing for fencing. Yes, you could do it. Right? Right? Yeah. Allez, allez. L'attaque touche gauche. Et tac touche. <laughs> yeah, for those, those fencers listening, all, all like yeah. one of you. Yeah. Um, wow, the head on this is beautiful. Fluffy white. Yeah, there's like clouds <laughs> on top of this. Lacing for days. And it's got a, uh, it's definitely like gold, the yeah. color. It's like gold, yellow, fairly, fairly hazy. Yes. Yeah, you can't really see too, you can see through it. No. Um, aroma-wise, I'm maybe getting some grainy sweetness, other than that, not much. Yeah, I get that, and some, uh, definitely some phenolics, but other yeah. than saying Saison yeast, I, I don't have any descriptors. So... <laughs> This is uh, a tart, refreshing ale. Group, group, this, and for those of you who don't, haven't figured it out yet, this is yet another saison. A tart, refreshing ale brewed with our dear friend, God damn it, Luke Bim La Fontaine. I know that because I'm an Islanders fan. Formerly of, oh God damn it, <laughs> D du ciel Lime. Oh no, not Lime, that's line. Sorry, that was the end of a sentence with an exclamation point. D du ciel. Apparently that's a brewery. I'll look that up in a minute. Hibiscus and blood orange in a mixed fermentation called man. Fucking market will lose mind at this one. I'm surprised this isn't pinker, honestly, if there's hibiscus in it. Yeah. And it's mixed fermentation, so. <laughs> so when they say mixed fermentation, that means they did multiple different fashions and blended it together? I mean, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they pitched both the Saccharomyces and the bugs at the same time. Yeah, it just means that it's not just strictly brewer's yeast, is that they're. Some other stuff in okay. here. I do. I don't know if that's like the bacillus or mm -hmm. Britannomyces. Right. Well, I would. I would guess. After the, the aroma, I would guess Britannomyces. See, uh, after the taste, I would have said it's lacking. Mm. Yeah. Unless I'm off, but yeah, I, I don't would, know. That's I would say lacto on the taste. What do you think, Mark? Which it, is very possible. It's definitely got some lacto in there. Yeah. Um, but it also it could be all of the above. In my, in my, yeah. It definitely also tastes like it's got some bread in there. Too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, aroma wise, it has a more of a barn yardy, another you know, shitty descriptor for radio, but I mean, it's kind of one of those things that when you when you had it before, you you know, like when you have something that has Britannomyces in it, yeah. you say barn yard to someone and they, they know what it is. See, it's shitty. When I think of barn yard, yard, I think of if you haven't been in like a horse barn or anything like that, it's like kind of going to the petting zoo and kind of the yeah, when the, you the inhale wet, the wet straw. Yeah, the wet straw and the kind of taste, well the taste that you get in the back of the mouth when you're just breathing. Yeah. Or, yeah. or if you're in my backyard right now when it's 90 degrees outside and your yeah. neighbor has four dogs. No, no, that's one's 150 pounds. That, <laughs> that, that's a different one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, that. But that I, I feel like when you talk about barnyard, like bad. that's what I get. Like it's straw, it's straw and a little bit of dampness and yeah, a little bit of like. I, I, I'm gonna say funkiness, but it, like that's what it is. It's just it smells slightly like decomposition and slightly like Dexter would fucking love this beer. Yeah, but that's what it is. That's what barnyard is. It's a little bit of all that shit. No, you're right. That's a really great way of explaining it. This like if we talked about how sour beer lovers would like the last one. This one to me is the one that like sour beer lovers would be like, this beer is crazy. Yeah, th this is very tart. This is tremendous. Yeah, it's really tart. tart. Really good. This is this one's better than the last one. It's tart, and I get the lime. Like after the tart and on the finish, yep. I definitely get the lime 
I don't really. I mean, I can see the line, but I don't. I don't get hibiscus or, or blood, blood orange. orange. I, blood orange. I was no. gonna say I get in the slight bitter notes in the finish. Maybe I might be literally dreaming that, but yeah. it. I don't get any. I don't get hibiscus like we did last time. That floral quality. No, I don't think it's as present as it was in the last one, but it might be, it might be providing some level of balance between the flavors in the background without being without standing out. You know, but this is the stuff that this these are the beers like this kind of stuff that is that blows my mind that people can create things like this and and it's just so incredibly different from some of the stuff that we had the last on the last episode. You what know? I love about this what styles like this is that every every batch is like a happy accident. Yeah, meaning like I'm sure that especially a brewery that accomplishes this can fairly consistently put out a beer that tastes like this. Uh -huh. But I, I can't imagine that they're able to control everything to the point where every single one is exactly the same. So that's what I like about the the, the whole idea behind this. I mean, apparently the lore of a, of a farmhouse style ale, ale or a saison is that in the hot in the hotter months, this is what um, the farm workers would would brew for themselves and sort of open ferment and. Um, right. Fermented higher temperatures, so obviously the yeast that would survive to do that, and the bugs that would survive would provide these flavors, and it, it would be very difficult to do the same with beer twice then. And it's not; it's less difficult now, but yeah, it's still impressive. Yeah, I, I think back on you know what it must have been like to try to brew, um, you know, prior to the not to the knowledge of uh, of microorganisms. But just kind of imagine that consistency must have been so hard in like the 16 and 1700s to create like the same kind of beer over and over. Like that must have been so hard. I feel like that's where blending came in. You know, being able to, you know, essentially have a taste master who knew what it was supposed to taste like and then throw some, you know, be able to take different badges and put it together and say, this is what we want. Yeah, and that just comes back to the brewing traditions of different regions. So, you know, in uh, Belgium, there's definitely. The historical precedents for blending of different beers, whereas in Northern Europe, you have the whole uh, Gabayic uh, oh, right. tradition where, like, it is what it is. Yeah. Like, they're not aiming for a target. It's just like, these are the things that we do, and in the end, we get beer. Right. And and it's going to be a little different each yeah, time. Whatever it tastes like is what it tastes like, but, you know, like, okay, so the, these are the this, these are the steps that we make, and then uh, we end up with beer, and we drink it. Well, this one's really interesting, and this is going to this is going to be one of the ones that it comes off with a low rating, but um, it's still a really high quality beer. It's going to be a pint for me, but this is just like an incredible beer. I don't think I could drink more than a pint of it just because. I'd be exhausted after drinking. <laughs> the thought process that goes into the drinking. The thought it. process, the way that my taste buds are working overtime to try to figure out what's going on there. Like, it's very complex on the palate. I mean, I feel like I would, I, I literally feel that. I would definitely get exhausted. Fatigue. Yeah, fatigue. Like, after drinking this beer, like, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous about the last two beers in the flight that we're going to have today because this one really makes you work for it. But it's a solid pint and it's an incredible beer. I'm really happy with it. This is everything that I bet made me want to drink craft beer, brew craft beer. This beer is, for me, is perfect. Yeah. There's not a single thing that I would change about it, not one. I could drink a lot of this beer, just not in one sitting for the exact same reason. And mostly because I would really want to, like, reflect on it uh -huh. while I drank it. What's impressive to me is that, you know, you know, being part of the homebrew club, we're lucky enough to have people bring some insane beers. Like to everything we do, especially Brian Bennett bringing, you know, um, Brian, your just, collection is the envy of, of all of us. The 2014 Cantillon was the last thing I had that he brought that blew my mind, and I had to leave to come record with you schlubs, and I missed out on a bunch of other good shit. Yes, it's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I'm I'm pontificating about this beer so much because that it's on that quality to me, it's on that level in terms of complexity, which is amazing because it was brewed in the U.S. within. In recent time, it's not like somebody's been sitting on this bottle for yeah. years and years and years. So it, it's great. Um, for me, it's going to be a bomb. Uh, I definitely want to be able to drink two of these back to back and, and spend an hour or so thinking about it while I drink it in perfect silence with some, a blindfold on or something. 
<laughs> um, it's like the opposite of a smoking jacket beer, yeah. but, but the same speed of drinking. Um, I uh, kudos. This is tremendous. I'm gonna stay at a pint. It's very complex and definitely worth the time to pontificate about as you drink it. But I don't think I want that second glass. Yeah, that's kind of where I fall with the mark. I, I think I'm in a perfect match. It's a I've, listen. It's the first two were those both the grassroots ones? Yes. Yes. All right. So now we're gonna kind of change gears to over to their uh, it's ancestral ancestral series. series, and this one's called Anna. The background on this one is, uh, I, from what I gathered, this series is all named after, um, much like their logo we mentioned earlier, is named after previous, uh, not previous, but uh, deceased family members. Um, and I was with you, I say you, he did. <laughs> I tell you, he did. <laughs> the Colonel! It's like t total, like, worst time to do something like that. I'm about to talk about someone's fucking dead dead uh, family member who was 91 when they died here. I'm just joking about it. Shit. Um, it's all right. That's what we do. So Anna was uh, born in 1902, died in 1993, was their grandfather's sister. And their Hillstead, the Hill Farmstead Brewery rests upon a land that was once home to her and her 13 siblings. 13 kids. Like, oh, that's <laughs> terrifying. In her honor, this beer is crafted from American malted barley, European and American hops, Vermont wildflower honey, our distinctive farmhouse yeast, and water from the well that's on the place. That's Un interesting. Oh, I'm interested in that. Unfiltered and naturally carbonated, this ale, this is the ale that I dreamed of shared with Anne. Okay. So, uh, a, lot of, a lot of history behind it. Yeah. And, and once again, this is the final saison of our episode. Yeah. And if it's possible, it's even lighter than the yeah, last it's one. Yeah, it's definitely it's pale it's straw, it's light straw. It's definitely the straw color, yeah. It's, I'm looking at the uh, the nice periodic table of beer styles that Mark moved over here. And it has a, a cheat sheet for SRM ratings. And it says light straw is 1 to 2.5, and pale straw is 2.5 to 3.5. I think this falls on the light straw. Yeah, it's definitely a light straw. It's also quite hazy. It's very it's very hazy, which is pretty standard for saisons. And it's got that same pillowy... The head, the head on top. It might even be better. That hangs out, you know, for a little bit afterwards. This has got a shitload of funk in it. Yes. This is barnyard extraordinary. This, this one might be the the funkiest scent that we've had of the first of the year so far. Of the three, yeah, I would I would buy onto that. Yeah, this is so, uh, I'm gonna love this. So this one kind of falls in it's we're calling it a barnyard, but again, it's that kind of idea of there's sour and earth and tang and all these weird flavors, kind of all so not flavors, aromas. There's all these weird aromas kind of put together into one that it hits your nose and you're like, that's kind of off putting, but kind of pleasant. And I'm not 100%. Let me try that again. And then you come back and you're like, I'm still stuck at it's. It's like a Dorito of nose. Like that's what it is. Like the Doritos, <laughs> Doritos are awesome because they don't hit the same flavor point all the time, right? right? That's what this is. It's just like this weird aroma that just keeps hitting different portions of your nose. I see you thinking. You you ready to say something, far? Or you want to say more? I feel like you're thinking. You're either fucking around with something and ignoring everything, or you're thinking very hard. One of those two things. Uh, you drunk? Okay, solid. So he's focusing on diction for the next three words that he wants to say. So I'll, I'll take over. The What you said is exactly correct, and it follows through in the flavor. I'm trying. Yes. It's still true. I'm ignoring still the shit true. out of you and going back to Kevin. What Kevin said was, was correct. It, the, the, all those things come together, and it's the same in the flavor. As you're swirling it in your mouth, you get a lot of tang and a lot of lactic sourness. But that lactic sourness is balanced by... Um, this like unexplainable quality that mutes it and simultaneously switches over to it's um, definitely the most crushable of the three. Really, you think it's the most crushable of the three? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I like so. quaffable more than crushable. Apparently, if we say crushable at the uh, uh, BJCP class, we're going to be scolded and beat with a rod. That, that's fine. I'm just not going to write it on the paper. <laughs> no, 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 not the paper. We mentioned the word to John. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> I can take John. What's the no, uh, what's the text John. on the bottom of this one? What's the what is this one considered on the bottom of the bottle there? This is a saison, uh, farmhouse style saison. 
No, that's not the one. Oh, sorry. Sorry, that's uh, not even the one we're drinking. No, it's not. Um, no, I just was looking for a little more. This one comes in at two, six point uh, two percent ABV. Yeah, and it's a Farmstead Ale brewed with honey. Farmstead being a registered trademark, apparently. Yep. Sure Which is. I guess is their uh, yeast strain. I don't know if it's their strain, but it's definitely what they were. They they consistently refer to their farmhouse style ales as a Farmstead Ale. All right, and uh, it's from September twenty seventeen. What I find interesting is they uh, they refer to it as a Vermont honey ale. I guess like I guess given given that inference from reading it, I guess I get a little bit of sweetness from honey, but like I wouldn't have said that off the jump. Yeah, I was looking there, for a there's so much orange. other fermentation derived character in yeah. there that I I don't specifically pick out anything that says honey to me. Yeah. I mean I would love to give this to a what we'll call a normal craft beer drinker beer. and have them smell more. Well, yeah, too. But a normal craft beer drinker has the smell to smell this. Like, I'd love to give this to Rick from LIB and me and have him smell this. <laughs> this is not something you would enjoy. Rick, Rick. I don't know Rick, so. Yeah. I only bring that up. Rick is a good brewer, but he struggles with vocabulary worse than the three of us. Okay. Yeah, but that's, that, that's not to say that we're good at it. Yeah. But it's not even no, it's not even that's not even the reason why. It's mostly because in the last the last class we were doing Saisons and he was saying he didn't like them, and I can imagine that this being a sudden style of Saison that he's had. Because this is not a normal beer. Like this is even stretches even further from the other ones we had. This is you know, you know fully in the category of craft beer nerd drinking. See, I don't know about that. I feel like this one is a little bit more accessible than the last one that we had. I think the sourness is not quite as prominent. Um, the acid is not as strong. Like, I think that this one this might be Glen beer. I feel like this is a little. No, it's not Glen beer. Glen would love to throw up beer. But if you have a white wine drinker, I think they would really like this beer. Um, but I think that this one's a little more accessible than the um, the last one, the uh, Sonia, Son, Sonia, whatever the fuck it is. I guess my thought process. I think people would have less less trouble with sour because we've got a lot of people. Uh, like sour I don't think candies. This, is a, uh, this is not a sour. I agree. Yeah, I think I, I think that other one was. It's more, it's way more sour than this one. Is. Right. So I think people would have a better, easier time dealing with the tart sour beer right. than they would with this. The finish on this beer is basically undescribable unless you had a saison before. It, it's that okay. it's that, that, that funk that it's a, it's an odd, strange thing. But I didn't that like this is a flavor you're not getting in basically any other beverage or food other than the thing we're having right now. No, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying. It definitely does not finish clean. There is a certain consistency that kind of starts to coat the back of the palate to it that um, for, makes that sourness and that funkiness build up a little bit. I think yeah. that's what you're trying to explain. Yes. And um, I'm trying to think of a food stuff that I may have had that would create something similar, but the only thing else that I can compare Jeez. to... Actually, you know what? That's really yeah, good. I like sticky you, cheese. My brain was going around the same direction. Yeah, yeah, if you if you have a meal that has a lot of a cheese, you know, probably a blue cheese or something. Telegio. Yeah, yeah. Telegio is the thing that I was thinking yeah. of. That builds up a little bit on the back of that palate after a while. Like, yeah, like and, a really funky soft cheese. Yeah, I would say that this is a comparable... The experience is comparable. That's it's not the flavor that's yeah. comparable. It's not the smell that's comparable. It's the experience of it building up on your palate that's coming. Yeah, where like you have a little bit of it and then it like it just clings to the inside of your mouth. Yeah. Like, I think I want more. My yeah. wa my wife's them. This is I have to give her some of this what she gets here. Yeah. This is this is when we stuff like all these all three of these first beers are the things that like when I go to Mom's Cafe in Philly. Yeah. The thing that we get this there, is what you're looking for. Yeah, that's what we get there that we tend not to get a lot of other places. And so it's, no, this, this is, is super cool. I will be honest. The drugs you're looking for. <laughs> so yeah. sure is. But this is stuff that like, I'll be honest. No one on Long Island makes anything like this. No. Nobody makes anything like this. You know, hopefully soon I can think of a couple uh, that that may. Right. But I mean, you know, this is a hard to get thing. Jamie over at St. James does some great Belgian style stuff, but he doesn't do anything like this. No, it's just a totally different wheelhouse. Yeah, this is this is a really incredible stuff. I feel like a lot of 
a lot of breweries probably right so would love the type of yeast and bugs and shit that do this into their brewery. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I think that's a big part of it too, that they don't want this, that they go, listen, this is just going to cause trouble. We don't want it. Yeah. But. All right, so where are we at for ratings on this oh. one? You guys got to start. I got to think about it. I would give this one a bomber. It's, uh, it, again, it's another one of, it's another year where the complexity, you kind of have to work your way through the, you have to work your way through it. Yeah. But I definitely think it is, uh, cleaner, I guess you could say. It's definitely, uh, it's more crushable. Uh, Sorry, I can't laugh. I, mean, I, can't, I can't help but laugh. There's been a whole thread on in one of the homebrew uh, club uh, Facebooks about that word. So I'm sorry. The word crushable. Yes. Sorry. Right. It's it's more, it's definitely more digestible to borrow from Belgians. Right. Uh, than to the other two that we've had so far, and I it, it it's good. I like the tartness. I like the complexity of the earthy, funky. Flavors, yeah, it, it's good. I I would like two glasses of this, and then after that, I'm gonna be looking for something less complex and challenging. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump that up to a growler. This is essentially my pale ale. Not to say that it's it has way more complexity than that, right? But I I, I could drink this forever. There's no R M. Sure. It's not a it's not a keg because of the reasons you described, but I have a, a higher tolerance for um, the finish and everything else. I think right. that most people do, um, and I, I the complexity is what's going to want going to want me to drink more of it in a sitting. I'm going to sit here and try to figure this whole thing out, and by the time I figure it out, I'm going to be so the drunk that I'll, I'll never remember it. <laughs> exactly, it does. Um, I talked to. Him. <laughs> so I realized the other day when I was listening to one of our episodes that um, Justin, you kind of you, you used the word aperitif in one of the episodes and but you said it as if you, after dinner, which should have been a digestivo. Right, whatever. correct. Yes. Right, so, and, and this was something I, I didn't realize at the time, probably because it was the third episode or so, and I was a little drunk, but you know, and so I started thinking about the difference between those two, like, right? One gets you going and wants you to make you start the meal, and the other one helps you settle the meal, right? Yeah. This one, to me, is that aperitif. Like, I, is that aperitif. I want two of these, before, like, as I'm just kind of having, like, a little snack and getting going. Then I'm ready to sit down to a meal. Yeah. And this might just be the fact that I'm hungry now. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, I feel like this kind of gets my mouth watering in all the right ways that I really want to. Now I want to sit down to a meal. I don't want this beer with the meal. I want something else with the meal. But I had one or two of these while we were having some fruit, while we were having some cheese. And, yeah, super good with fruit. You know, yeah. or, you know, or, you know, some sure. charcuterie. I'd be all on that right now. You know, to have that kind of stuff with this beer, I think would really do well. And then I want to sit down to my meal and have something different. Um, so it's going to be a bomber for me because I want to absolutely. But this is a really great beer. I think it's a little more accessible than the last beer. The lacing. I just have to say. Oh, yeah, it's insane. I mean, that's where I was drinking from over there. And it, it's still all the way to the rim of the glass. Yeah. yeah. There's it's, no beer left in my glass. It's sick. I can't no, shake it. Show, I'm, shaking, show, yeah, I'm yeah. shaking the thing, and the glazing isn't even moving. Yeah. No, it's this is a really great beer. And considering that we were kind of like a little antsy about the, the first, like, about what these beers were going to be after the foam experience. Right. Like, I'm ecstatic. Absolutely elated about these these three beers so far. Right, and we have a bonus beer, which is yeah out of left field for what we've been doing this whole time. Yeah, but Saison episode, I feel like we should have done a style profile on Saison after wow. drinking these. But these are great. I've been loving these first three beers. Like, so, what, what's your rating at? My he, rating he, was he bomber. I said about it. I said a bomber, yeah. but I mean, yeah. yeah, bomber is really is my rating on this because I think two of these while well, having like appetizers, and then okay, bring me something different. Let's sit down for the meal. Because right now, I will, now that this has kind of got me going, now I want a firm meal. Now I want a steak. Now I want a solid something to eat on this month. Pork loin? You know what? I'm looking forward to that pork loin like nobody's been there. And right it's, it's a smoked pork loin that has been braised and then uh, dry. No, not braised. Not, not braised, sorry. Braised the wrong word. It has dry been, brined. It has been dry brined and then uh, sprayed with uh, with beer. 
with beer and maple syrup. Well, well, the beer had maple syrup, but it just potentially too much maple syrup. <laughs> Never too much maple syrup. That's a lie. I'm not a maple syrup fan. Maple is pretty damn awesome, especially when it comes to barbecue. Look, man. Just because you're a weird fuck and you put like granulated sugar on your pancakes and waffles. I do. Doesn't mean that you're right. I didn't say it was right. So did your mom not love you that she didn't give you maple syrup? No, I never liked it. She, my mother loves maple syrup. Growing up, my breakfast for my mother, I shit you not, she worked in the food industry in a diner, essentially. Yeah, yeah. She I've been take, to the diner that my mom works at. Right. She would take um, uh, bacon, crispy. When I say crispy, probably a little too crispy, like beyond what we would normally eat, like close to burnt. I don't discriminate with it. So, like... Just completely out, right? As far as I'm concerned, destroyed. Yeah, for for you, destroyed. You like a rubbery, right? I wouldn't say rubbery, but I like to know that it's still neat. No, okay. yeah, she wants it to touch it and have it fall into six pieces. Yeah, no, that's, that's crush it up, right? This is right? terrible. In a middle plate, cover it with maple syrup and stir that around, and that's right. what she would eat. Okay, that might be a little much for me. So she's into it's... maple syrup. So she gave me definitely gave me maple syrup as a kid. I thought I was a fairly picky eater. And uh, she, I didn't like it. So that was the result was to, to put butter and sugar on it. I don't know where her brain went to there. It's actually pretty smart considering that's essentially what maple syrup is, with the exception of uh, maple flavor. So that, that last one here. Yeah, yeah no, no. I, yeah. I, I Listen, I love maple. But right, literally now for something completely different. Oh, and, not yeah, even close. And, yeah, and this one's called Everett. And Everett um, was the grandfather Everett. lived between 1908 and 1939. Um, Hill Farm said brewery rests upon the land that was once home to him and part of his siblings. This porter is crafted from American malted barley, English and German roasted malts, American hops, our ale yeast, and water from our well. It's unfiltered and naturally carbonated. Decadent in its depth with a complex backbone of chocolate, coffee, and malty sweetness. This is the ale that I dream to have shared with Everett. Hill Farm said brewery, uh, okay, that's kind of the same thing in all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, considering that we've just had so many things that are straw or lighter, to come out with something that's black, you know, that's uh, very dark amber or black, yeah, is and with a dark tan head, is a uh, kind of a you know change of pace. But look at the way the tiny fine bubbles that stick to the side of the glass when you swirl it are absolutely beautiful. It's a gorgeous beer. Um, I would, this is opaque, we can't see through it, and I know it's unfiltered, but I'd be surprised if this wasn't pretty damn clear on its own. Um, the aroma is faint, but chocolatey, and definitely some alcohol warmth in the, uh, in the aroma. Yeah, it smells a little bit like a, uh, it smells a, not hot. I don't get it. No, there's no, I don't get any light through this at all. Mark is holding his phone flashlight. Along the glass, and there is zero light. Zero light there. comes out the opposite yeah, this side. Is, this is devoid of light. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. It's it's black. It's 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 pitch black. It's not going anywhere. What do you got on the nose, Mark? I get uh, I get coffee. Yeah, definitely some coffee. I get coffee, maybe a little bit of chocolate. I get mostly coffee. Yeah. Um, I get more coffee, more black coffee, more cold brew coffee smell than. Uh, than chocolate on this one. No, the coffee is definitely the stronger aroma. It, it definitely follows through on the taste as well. Yeah. I haven't even tried it. Just, it's just uh, it. It's baker's chocolate a little bit too. Yeah, I mean, it's got a little bit of baker's chocolate in the flavor, but definitely has the uh, flavor and flavor acidity of uh, some some pretty good coffee. If you could, if you can get me some coffee that tastes like this. Or you know, close to this, I would drink that. This is uh, this is exquisite when it comes to a. Uh, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm that's sorry. Right. I, I just, I just probably got a sip of that, and that's wow. really good. This is outstanding. I, I'm I, I'm at a loss for words. All right, you you haven't tried. You still haven't tried that cold brew uh, nitro coffee yet, right? I had some nitro coffee at somebody's house that made that made it, and yeah. it, was, it was definitely more palatable to me. Yeah, than, but it was still too bitter. Not, okay. not the way you described the one you were talking. About. Right. Yeah. Um, you know the one I'm talking about. I forget the name of the brewery. The, right. The, the, the name of the guys that make it there, but they brew it on Long Island, and they're Bull Sale or something like that. Yeah, something along those lines. 
all I know is they sell it at the rest stop at fit, at the at the the only the Long Island Welcome Center. Yeah, the Long Island Welcome Center. That's halfway through Long Island already. Uh, <laughs> if you think of Long Island as Suffolk County, well, well, a, welcome to Long Island. If you don't like Nassau County, <laughs> no, who really does? Come on, I just drove there yesterday. Yeah. Uh, but they have. I know they have it on tap there. I'm sure they have it on tap other places, but that's where I know that it is. And every once in a while, the way home, I stop by again. Um, this is incredible. This it's so different from what we just had, but, but it's equally as good. But equally high quality and equally as complex, and it's absolutely incredible to me. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of things in here. The I will say this: as you drink it, uh, a, a slight, very slight bitterness builds. Mm -hmm. I won't call it astringency. I don't think it's astringency, although I think it has that that sort of quality as as you keep drinking it. Um, but I don't mind it. I feel like it belongs. It definitely has a almost like a smoke kind of flavor to it. Yeah, it's got like a, a sharpness that lingers on the palate after the sip. It, it tastes almost like it's smoked. Like that, that keeps coming into my head. Like it's almost that. It, yeah, it definitely has. It definitely has that uh, same kind of quality, like a rock and beer yeah. kind of thing. Like that kind of that smokiness, that little bit of char in there. But it's been smooth. Like I, I mean, I don't know how much. I mean, if you guys ever smoke weed as much. And not that I smoked a whole lot, but like in college, I think I smoked a little bit more than both of you guys. Oh, well, without a question, I never have. Um, but like, when you use a, a water bottle, water bottle, and it kind of cleans out the smoke because it passes the smoke through the water, that's a, like, it's kind of smooths everything out. It makes it a mellower version of what you what you were hitting before. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. It's like it's smoke, but it's mellowed out. Like it's been sent through a filter. Like it's smoothed out, you've got went through that water, it got cleaned up a little bit, and that's what you're hitting. Yeah, the, and uh, that's what I'm getting. It's like smoked beer, but it's it's been smooth and calmed I, down, which I like a lot. Yeah, I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm perceiving what you're saying is a little bit of spice, not like hot spice, but like a somewhat pepper all spice. Yeah, all spice. That's actually yeah, a much better explanation. That's a good way to yeah. explain it. Yeah. Mm. No, it's really incredible, and that it's so different from it, it's still blowing my mind that it's such a change of pace from the last couple of beers that we had. Yeah, it, it blows my mind, but it's still a level of complexity of each of the oh, beers. Yeah, yeah. All four of the beers, I think we could probably drink again and probably continue to talk about and still look at each other with a confused face. Oh. <laughs> no, this is the beer that I love drinking. These are these four beers that we've had. These are the things that I just want to hang out and drink and, you know, wish we had a guy, you know, we need a guy like Brian around right now. Brian Bennett around to be like, hey, what do you think of this one? Because <laughs> I know he'd have some good input these, on this. Yeah, these are definitely for sharing. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a, a. If you share these with different people, you're all. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, I get this. I get this. It's, it's a. It's kind of a it's, a. it's a party in your mouth, like Bob Rocks. Hey y'all. Uh, and I'm not invited. Why are you not invited? I don't know. <laughs> Mark. Mark's fairly broken. Well, we started off with uh, eleven. 11, 10. We went right to 11. We went 11, 10, 12. Our amps went to oh, 11, yeah. 11, 10, 12. Well, Everett is at 7.2. And I think, and one that's, of the other That's ones, the heftiest one we have. Yeah. One of them was 6.2. Yeah, and Anna was 6.2. And then we got uh, 5 on the All right. uh, brother. And you got brother, the uh, DL swap. Yeah, so yeah. was 6. All right, so I mean, these aren't exactly like light either, but. Yeah. But man, like this is. I'll tell you right now, there's not going to be one of these, not, none of these four bottles are going to be empty by the time I leave. It's a mission. You know, what I can tell you is that every bad young. Well, old, let's see, let's see if the age is on. Holy shit, he did. Yes, oh he did. Well, bummer to Everett. Yeah. Well, Anna, his sister Anna got, uh, yeah, got uh, the, she, she got to 91. So. Yeah, he must have been one of those, you know, 13 kids. Well, yeah, yeah. one of 13 siblings, exactly. That's crazy. That's my father, one of 13. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Considering that your dad's only like forty-five, like <laughs> my yeah. dad is not forty-five. Sorry, forty-seven. It's fifty-five. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's it's incredible that like you would think like I, every time I think of like old like thirteen or fourteen kids, I think of like old-timey families right. like this, like nineteen hundred or eighteen fifty. <laughs> like we had fourteen kids. We had fourteen kids because we weren't sure if any of them were in cholera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, and we need know. to staff the farm. Damn it. 
That, that's my Ohio family. There's ten of them. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure they still run a farm. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I assume that nothing has changed in Ohio since 1803. All right, where where are we rating this one? Uh, I got to keep working on it. It's I, tough can't, one. I can't come with a. I finished mine. I finished mine. I uh, I can rate it pretty confidently. It's going to be a growler for me. This is one of the best uh, dark beers that I've had in a very long time. It combines all the things that I, on paper I would hate and I love. So, um, you know, the, the bitterness, the baker's chocolate, the uh, the roast, all of those things that, that are usually associated with coffee that not, are not usually my jam, this is, it becomes perfect in this. It is a very good robust porter, but I'm going to have to stay at the bottom line. Uh, it's hard to really articulate why, but I think two glasses is enough. Any more than that would be too much. I can I, I can understand that, especially from the finish standpoint. The finish is, uh, as we mentioned before, somewhat sharp, but it's still very clean. So I feel like that's the side of the fence you end up falling on. I think the finish, and you know, this will speak, Kevin can speak to it, but I think the finish is kind of what will separate whether or not this is a higher ranking beer or a lower ranking. Yeah, for me, this, I think this, I'm going to side with Mark on this one. I'm not a bomber. I don't think I could do more than two pints of this without not, if I'm focusing on this, two pints is a, as much as I could drink it at all. Not focusing on it, I feel it just would just be a crime. Yeah, that's like, true. It would be wrong to not enjoy this beer as much as I am right now. And really thinking about it and contemplating it. Um, the flavor of it is fantastic. The depth of flavor is amazing. And so for me, I think after two, I would either be exhausted or just so completely satiated that I wouldn't want to go on. Right. Um, this is one that it would be great to just have one of and hang out and relax with. Um, but, I don't know how to have one of it. So. Right, but to have to have one of this would be so yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, but if you told me that, like, hey, tonight we're going out, you can only have one beer, I'd probably want this. I'll be honest. Out of the four here, if I had to pick one, to, if I could only try one, if I had one of them again, yeah, this would be the one. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I think so too. I mean, this is this is so good, and it blows my mind that they that these came from the same brewery. And it makes me want to try the New England IPAs. Right. So, I mean, you told me that, like, okay, the three saisons that we had all came from the same brewery. I said, okay, fine. They're kind of in the same family. They're all really well done and super complex. I hate using super as the superlative here. It makes sense. But this is it. Like, they are, they are super complex and really good. And they kind of give you the same vibe as you do when you get stuff actually from Europe. Yeah. Um, but... Like, Everett here might be my favorite of the day, and I don't even know how to, I don't know how to describe saying that, like, I don't want to in any way demean the other three that I had that were so good. I think it's also our pension for, for dark beers to begin with. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now, in the heat of summer, this might not be my super fit, might not be the one that I reach for. But, oh, hey, it's, it's, it's blue will be for me. you know, but hanging out, like, once the sun goes down and the fire is up, like this is the one that I'm hanging out drinking. Yeah. You know, when we're hanging out, we're playing cornhole and you know, we're playing games and stuff. I want the other stuff that's gonna, you know, be a little bit brighter. But towards the end of the night, I'm gonna have one of these. I'm gonna go to sleep. And honestly, after three the three episodes we've recorded so far, I'm bright now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not that. It certainly it really does. does. It so really, really does. Not that we had to say it, but obviously Hill Park's the brewery stands up to uh, its reputation. Um, I am going to if I if I go end up going to Vermont at some point, I'm going to try to stop by there. I will, I will potentially bring back some New England IPAs for us to try. Cause right. If, if I'm sold, you can. If they told me they made uh, flip flops, and we won't get into what those are. Right. Again, but uh, if they made flip flops, I would probably buy those Not too. Sandals. Not saying. Not saying. So, uh, thank you very much, Hills Farm. Thank yeah. you very much, Keith. Thanks, yeah. Keith, for thank you, bringing Keith. these back, man. Uh, these were great. As bad as much as we didn't enjoy foam, yeah, that's how much we enjoyed these. Like these are fantastic beers. This is definitely uh, beer nerdery at its finest. 
That's what this beer is. Reparations for foam. Yes, it is reparations for foam. All right, guys. All right. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. If you enjoyed Beertastic Voyage, please be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to review and rate us. The guys can be found online at www.beertasticvoyage.com. On Facebook at www.facebook.com slash beertasticvoyage. And Twitter and Instagram at beertasticshow. Or send them a good old-fashioned email at beertasticvoyage at gmail.com. Thanks for listening and cheers for local beers.